Well, howdy there guys. Hope you're having a great day out there as always. Today I'm gonna to share with you five stocks that I plan to not sell in 2020, regardless how much they go up. So let's say that some of these stocks go up 20%, 40%, 60%. If we're talking moves like that, a lot of times you might consider actually selling a stock. But with these five stocks I'm gonna share with you here today, I have no plans to sell them. Pretty much don't matter what they do, even if these stocks were to double up. These are the type of stocks I absolutely won't sell, which kind of means like I believe in these type of stocks the most. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video today. Hope you get a lot of value. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down there in the comments section. So in the public account alone this year, we've taken nearly $37,000 in profits. In the public account, if you don't know what that is, it's an account that's in my private stock market membership group. And so members in there get to see exactly how I run an account, exactly why I sell a stock, why I buy stock, why I'm looking at this stock, why I'm selling this stock. And so members in there get to see exactly the stocks I sell, whether I make profits, whether I take losses. They get to understand exactly the mindset that goes into it and whatnot. And it's been an amazing year in that account. I mean, nearly $37,000 in profits we've taken. Never mind, we probably have, I don't know, probably close to 100K in paper profits that we could take here today in that account alone. So it's been an amazing year in that account and across all my accounts. I'm not sure if we're going to hit six figures in profits taken this year, but it should be pretty close if we don't. By the way, if you guys are interested in joining my private stock market membership group, we got a sick deal happening New Year's Day, okay? And that deal is going to run through January 5th. If you're interested in getting an email when that deal drops, go ahead and enter your information. In the description, there will be a link down there. You can put in your email. It will shoot you an email as soon as that deal drops if you're interested in joining that group, okay? First stock up here that I have no plans to sell up anytime soon. I'm not interested in selling stock. I mean, this is the most obvious one. This is the most obvious one because this is stock I talk about more than any other. And and that's Tesla stock. I mean, this stock has had an amazing past six or seven months from under 200 bucks a share to now over 400. And you'd think with a move like that, I, I would have plans to maybe sell some shares and maybe I'd be like, let's take some profits in Tesla stock. No, I mean, if you guys know my bullish thesis, which if you don't know my bullish thesis, check out this video. Like literally in YouTube, you can type in Tesla stock, $3,000. And there's a video that goes into why I believe Tesla stock will be $3,000 plus a share as long as they execute over the next 10 years. And so I'm not gonna spend the whole video talking about Tesla stock and why I'm bullish on that stock. I've done a million videos in the past why I'm super bullish on that stock. And, and when you look at this from a, from a context of, oh wait, I could sell a stock that's up a bunch this year or up a bunch in the last seven months, let's say for instance, right? It's $400 a share. But if I think it's gonna be a multi-thousand dollar stock over the next five, 10 years, selling at 400 is absolutely a joke. So for me, it's a no sell in 2020, regardless what happens, whether that stock goes to $500, $600, $800 a share, it's just not a stock I, I'm willing to sell at any price here in the short term term, okay? Stock number two up here is Facebook. This is a stock that I put more money in than any other in the public account. I was buying this stock like crazy in 2018 when they were going through all their drama and maybe even a little bit in early 2019, okay? It's a $206 stock. And this is one that I really went into my full bullish thesis on. Actually, I think it was a video just yesterday or the day before I did where I talked about, is it too late to buy Facebook stock now? And to be quite frank with you, it's just a very, very, very undervalued company, okay? It's one of the big techs, let's call it, okay? Nearly $600 billion mark cap, but it's just extremely undervalued. You're looking at a Ford P of 22 on this company. And there will not be a big tech Goliath that grows net income faster than Facebook does over the next five years. This is gonna be a net income growth beast. This is a company that I expect to 2X, if not 3X, their net income over the next five years. We're not even talking about 10 years. Just over the next five years, they should easily 2X if not 3x their net income. And when I look at a Ford P of 22 on this company, it's just a joke. This company should be trading at a 35 plus forward P and I'm getting these shares for a 22. And keep in mind, a lot of the shares I bought, I bought for 16 or 19, which was even more disgustingly undervalued. And so when I look at Facebook stock, you know, and usually I, I like to think about this whenever I, there's a stock I put more money in than any other, like we did with Facebook stock. Generally, I'm thinking like I have no plans to sell that anytime soon. And maybe I don't want to necessarily you want to say it's a hold for life, but it's a hold for many, many years to go in the future. And that's what you should feel comfortable with when you're making a, a stock your biggest position, something you feel comfortable with being in for years to come in the future, okay? That's stock number two that I have no plans to sell. Stock number three that I won't sell in 2020 is ticker symbol SWKS. This is a company called Skyworks Solutions. It's a $119 stock here today. And Skyworks Solutions makes connectivity chips, RF solutions for a ton of different electronics out there. Let's put it like that, okay? Four 
4P on this one up under 16, that is gross, okay? That is a gross 4P on this company because that's a 4P lower than what the market's trading at. And this is a company that has massive growth opportunities over the next three to five years, needless to say. This is a company that has everybody that you would possibly want as your customer. Oh, Amazon? Oh yeah, they're a customer of Skyward Solutions. What about Google? Yeah, they're a customer of Skyward Solutions. Samsung, what about them? Yeah. Tesla, are they a customer of Skyward Solutions? Yep. Microsoft, what about Apple? Apple likes to be so secretive, Skyward Solutions can't even list them as a customer, but they get about 40% of their business from Apple. So when you look at a company like Skyward Solutions, you're getting, I mean, everybody you would wanna be your customer, they're Skyward Solutions customer. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And here's the best way to explain it. Skyworks makes connectivity chips, right? That connect people to devices, right? But in the future, it's all about connecting devices to devices. And I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about 5G's coming, things like that, and, and devices being able to talk to each other. And if you even think about autonomous taxi networks in the future, right? The thing that could really put that over the top is if cars are able to talk to each other and cars are able to figure out, oh, I need to change this thing. Oh, I need to be able to change to this lane over there. Oh, this car's like, oh, I should speed up. I should change over to this lane. And all these cars could talk to each other other, and then if that ends up working out, then you could be in a situation essentially where cars are able to where travel in distances that are like this close to each other, and the amount of traffic on highways or roads in general is cut down substantially, and the reason they would be able to follow each other so close like that is essentially if, if every car knows what the other car is doing, then there's no reason to keep a massive gap in between cars. Like traditionally, if you drive on the highway and you're going 65, 70 miles an hour, you leave multi-car links between you and the next next car in front of you unless you're one of those tailgater type people, right? There's usually multi-car links in there and that helps it create a bunch of traffic and that slows down things because cars aren't able to uh, travel right next to each other. Why do you have to do that? Because you don't know what the guy in front of you is gonna do, right? But if all the cars are connected to each other, they all know exactly what lanes they're going in, they all know exactly what speed to go in, things like that, then it becomes a lot easier and that ends up cutting down on the huge amount of traffic we have nowadays, okay? And that's just one example of connected devices. Okay, there are a lot of mega trends going for Skyward Solutions. 5G being the biggest one, okay? Artificial intelligence, machine learning, everything about factories and robots being connected to each other. That's a huge opportunity. Autonomous driving, as we just spoke about, virtual reality, smart cities. All these mega trends are huge opportunities for Skyward Solutions to grow their business a ton. And keep in mind, once again, this is a company that's trading at a 16, under a 16 forward PE. And a lot of the shares I bought in Skyworks, I was getting this at like a forward P of 10 or 11, it's just, it's just disgustingly undervalued. There's a lot more content opportunity for Skyworks Solutions when the 5G phones start coming out, which by the way, some 5G phones have already come out, but 2020 and 2021 will be the years of 5G. In 2020 and in 2021, that's when you'll see every single major smartphone manufacturer out there launching 5G phones. In 2021 and 2022, those will be mass market years for 5G phones, and that's when the masses will really start to upgrade. And that's when we'll start seeing some huge volumes there for the 5G increase. Now, in going from a 4G device to a 5G device, Skyworks estimates it goes from about $18 in opportunity on the front end value to about $25 with a 5G device. And keep in mind, I don't know, I almost think they might be a little conservative on those numbers. Because you look at filters, you need almost what, you know, 75, 80% more filters. You need double the amount of bands. So I'm not sure if Skyworks is sandbagging a little bit there, but I'm almost looking at 5G because there's going to be they're going to be so much more complex. I almost think there's a, there's a chance that they could actually 2x their content opportunity in 5G devices versus something like a 4G device. We'll have to see. But needless to say, at the end of the day, it's a massive content opportunity when all these 5G smartphones start to come out versus you know the 4G phones that uh, Skyworks is mainly in today. Never mind over the 3G phones, which keep in mind a lot of different parts around the world are still really like on 3G, which was a really really small opportunity for somebody like a Skyworks versus you know a 4G phone and then especially 5G phones in the future. If we talk about connected cars and we talk about the autopilot systems and autonomous driving and all those sorts of things, right? Remember, this is a company that has Tesla as their customer as well as a bunch of other players out there. 
And if you look at this, okay, there's $50 of radio frequency content expected in each autonomous vehicle. So needless to say, this is not like a small amount of money here that's up for grabs when you talk about all these autonomous vehicles in the future. This is a huge opportunity. Each one of those cars, I mean, $50 of content, this is a huge other opportunity. And I know the smartphone can kind of dwarf like these other opportunities, but this is still a huge opportunity. And if they're putting $50 of content in one of those vehicles, they're probably making $20 to $30 of profit out of that vehicle, okay? So that's just a huge, huge opportunity for the company and another growth factor for that net income over the next, let's say, five to 10 years, okay? Company that's very well run and a company that has grown a lot. I mean, you go back to fiscal year 2013, this is a company doing about $2.20 of earnings per share. You look at fiscal 2018, $7.22. That's over a 3x plus in about a five year span. So Skyrock Solutions, unbelievable company, a company I don't want to sell in 2020, regardless what happens to that stock price. If it goes up to $150, heck, even if it goes up to $170, $180 in 2020, it's just a stock I can't sell because it's already significantly undervalued and they have too much growth ahead of them over the next three to five years that it makes me just say, I can't, I just can't sell that particular stock. Okay, so that was stock number three. Stock number four up here that I just can't sell no matter the price and that is Obidi Boobu stock. This is a stock that here today is a little under $31 a share and I bought a ton of Uber shares. I'll be quite frank with you. I bought a ridiculous amount of Uber shares around $26, $27, $28 over the past several months and I believe now I have well over three thousand Uber shares. So it's not like a position I made to a small position. I put quite a bit of money into Uber stock. Okay. Now there's another one like Tesla that I'm not going to spend a ton of time on here today because I've done tons of Uber videos in the past. I haven't done as many as I've done Tesla videos, but you know, this video here, why I just spent $23,000 on Uber stock. That's a super helpful video. If you want to hear my full bullish thesis around Uber in three stocks, December edition, one of the stocks mentioned there was Uber stock that once again, I go into depth on. So if you really want to hear my full bullish thesis on Uber stock. You know, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes talking about it here. Just go watch those videos, okay? But needless to say, at the end of the day, it's a company that's under a $50 billion market cap. In my opinion, this will be a company that has $150 to $250 billion market cap five years from now. It's a growth beast growing 30% plus. Expect it next year, 2021, should be the first profitable year for Uber. And overall, 2022 will be in the profits really start to roll in. And in my opinion, the stock price of Uber Uber will already kind of be reflected by that time. So if I'm looking at Uber stock, I think this is a stock that could run a lot in 2020 and into 2021 in anticipation for those big profits to start to roll in. And then once Uber starts making those big profits, then it's going to go from they can't make money to, oh my gosh, how much money are they going to start making? And so I absolutely love Uber. Once again, if you want to know my in-depth opinion on Uber stock, just go check out those other videos. Okay. And the fifth stock that I will not sell, this is fifth stock. Okay, National Beverage Company. This is not some type of high growth name or something like that or something that I think is unbelievably undervalued. It's really nothing like that. Okay, this is about a $52 stock. But at the end of the day with National Beverage Corporation, I just love that they're a beverage corporation. They have nothing to do with tech. They offer me good diversity in my portfolios. And sometimes you find a company that you just don't want to sell because they offer you too much diversity of your portfolio. And I look at my portfolio and it's a lot of tech. It's very tech heavy. And so it's nice to own a company like a drink maker that has nothing to do with tech and doesn't go through those type of fluctuations. And in 2020, they got a couple new flavors coming out. One's called Lemoncello. There's a company that, you know, people said they haven't been innovating coming out with enough new flavors. Well, they're definitely doing a lot this upcoming year. They also have a watermelon flavored of LaCroix coming out in 2020. So I'd look at a, a stock like that. And I just love the diversity it gives me there, guys. So that was five stocks I will not sell in 2020. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you got some value from this. And don't forget, if you want to get in my private group, we got a sick deal coming New Year's Day. Check out the description and click the link down there, put in your email and we'll shoot you an email as soon as the deal drops on New Year's Day if you're interested in joining my private stock market membership group. Anyways, thank you for watching and have a great day.